<laughs> Hard to say. <laughs> he, he, I think actually we all said that if Ted Fisher had been our, our, our IC, yeah. he'd have been much, the unit would have been much better. But Tom was a, was a blustering sort of a chap, you know, and uh, he was the one that operated on me in the first operation in Malaya. But uh, no, I suppose he did a good job, but uh, I'd soon see said any other doctors than Tom. Mm. Well, what, about, me. what about, uh, did you see Norm Eady working? Uh, no. Did Lieutenant Colonel Eady? No, I didn't. What about um, uh, Alan Hobbs? He was very, very good. He was a real gentleman and, and really concerned about your welfare and, 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 a, and a terrific surgeon here for sure. Yes. And his sons have been a Sons were surgeons too. Do you remember that? No, I didn't. Know his, that. his two sons were surgeons, mm. and his like two or three uh, grandsons. They mm. all become surgeons. Yes, yeah, it often stays in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about Sid Crowns? He was he was very good too. He's a mm. short chap, and uh, no, he was he was super too. Really good, yeah. Mm. What I told. And the, and, and the Fisher. Fisher, he was absolutely served. Uh, very, very uh, uh, dogmatic and uh, and things like that. But uh, he knew what he was doing, and uh, he, he, there was no you wouldn't sort of deviate from what he said because he said he what he what he said he reckoned he knew, even though he did make like a mistake early in the piece. But uh, no, he was really good to get on with. He had to be. Well, he was an officer and we were privates and sergeants, but uh, he looked down on us a bit, but uh, he was fair, I think, but... Uh, what was his nickname? <laughs> the Fuhrer. <laughs> he worked, actually, just like, well, a few even in the POW camps, I don't know where he got his clothes from, but he was nearly always nicely dressed, whereas the post, we were, more or less had lap laps, but... Uh, and he used to walk around with that sure walk of a, of a senior officer or a general in the way he used to carry on, you know. But um, I liked him, but uh, you had to be careful with him, I think. What about uh, Robbie Richards? Did you have any contact with no, him? No, not really, not really. And you obviously didn't have any contact with Claude Anson, unless it was a 55 kilo can. Yeah, no, actually, he said 55 kilos, there was. Uh, many huts there, they were great big huts, or wards as the top chap scores, and uh, the officers had different ones, you know, and where I was, more or less, it was Coatsy and uh, he, he in charge of the ulcer ward and, and uh, the amputation ward. Yes. Uh, what about Cumming? Does that name ring a bell? I know of him, but mm. I didn't know him really. And what about Tom LeBreton? Tom Breton, he was mm. another nice mm. chap. He mm. was a uh, Position, from what I can remember. Did you hear anything about anything that he did after, you know, around the time that you were at non combaton I believe he was still in Thailand, but did you hear anything of any of his work? I think he was in, he, he went out with some small, one or two small parties way out in the jungle somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think that's where he went to yes. and uh, did a fairly good job there too, I believe. And what about John Higgin? John Higgins was another one of ours, but uh, no, he was no, he's attached to us for a while. That's all. And what about Alec White or Hoppy White? No, no. no. Did he have a limp? Is that why he was called Hoppy? Or? I don't know. No. And now, the dentist, Stuart oh, Simpson. Simi, Simi, yeah, Simi, yeah. He, he was he was a very very nice, gentle sort of person, and he he wouldn't hurt you if he possibly could get out. But you know. Mm. Real gentle mm -hmm. uh, dentist. Yes. Most dentists, I'll take a bit of uh, like, uh, well, uh, what do they call it? Uh, a bit sadistic in some ways, I think, a dentist, <laughs> from my, my point of view. Anyhow. Well, it seemed that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about your chaplains? Do you remember the chaplains you had up there? Uh, yeah, in the in the uh, in our unit we had um, Padre Quinn, who was the Catholic Church. He was a very very nice chap. He used to walk around, come around in the, in our rooms, and uh, 
when we were living in a hospital and a big school there and um, used to come around there and talk to the chaps. He's very, 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 very friendly. Kirby, uh, Pavey Bashford, he was at Church of England. He was, uh, he was good too. He didn't uh, mix with the men so much. And the other chap was Padre Jones. He was a uh, Presbyterian and uh, he didn't seem to mix with the people, with the troops very much at all. Mm -hmm. And what about the chaplains who were up in Burma with you? you? You've already mentioned Bashford, he was up there with you, wasn't he? He was up there, but it was just, he wasn't really, no, the, the chaps more or less with us it was either Benjamin or Matheson. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what unit uh, Benjamin was in, but uh, Matheson was, he was in the Navy, he, he got sunk on, sunk in Sandra Straits there and this, he got away. and. Uh, he was on the HMAS Perth, was he? He was HMAS yeah. Perth, yes, he was their chaplain there. Yeah. And what did you think of their work uh, as prisoner of war doctors on the railway? Uh, sorry, chaplain. Oh, yeah. chaplain? Yeah. Oh, pretty well, though. You had one or two that were a bit uh, bombastic. One chap we know in, in well, more or less a chap in charge of where they, they all the leggies were. He was, he was a bit, uh, they used to call him. Uh, the battleship, because he'd come around and he'd say, oh, you're going to die. And, uh, yeah, things like this, you know. Mm. He wasn't very popular. Mm. <laughs> now, can you remember the names of any of the other medical orderlies, uh, like yourself? Oh, well, actually, uh, Keith Cole, or actually we called him uh, Sam Cole, because uh, out of the song what the poem I suppose was this, but his name was Keith Cole mm. and him and I were the two ones who main ones looking after the the all the legacies and the also ward. Mm. Mm. Did you ever come across a fellow at fifty an Air Force fellow at fifty five kilo camp by the name of mm, Jock? Oh, the name's escaped me <laughs> right no. right this moment. No, I can't say I do. This fellow, uh, were you at 55 when Coates was that ill that he had to be carried around on a stretcher? To... No, that was just before I got there. Yes, yeah. Yeah. No, he was very, very ill, I believe. Yes. Yeah. But he used to still go out and, and be on the stretcher and he'd still try and help the, the ulcer cases, yeah. scrape the muck off the, off the ulcers. Yeah. What, what was it? What was it? You know, what was the sort of style, or how did he treat people? Was he abrupt with them? Or? Yeah, he was a abrupt person mm. uh, in lots of ways. You know, he he, he didn't mince his words, and mm. uh, even uh, I know one of my uh, my brother's wife, she nursed under him when she was single, mm. and he was quite abrupt in in the wards too after the war, mm. because he just couldn't be bothered with these. He'd be going through the ward and say, oh, ma, can, doctor, I've got a pain in the big toe. He couldn't be bothered with those sort of things after what he'd been through. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, oh, you'll be right. He said, mm -hmm. um, keep your bowels open, keep your faith in God, and you'll be right. <laughs> and he'd way go and meet me, me, uh, me, me uh, sister-in-law used to say, I'd say, now, doctor, but what's, what's he want? Oh, he'll be right, he'll be right. And she, she'd have a, just about run after him and try and find out what what uh, he wanted for some of the patients. Yes, yeah. They were quite abrupt, but uh, at the same 